Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us here at Mostly Shenanigans. If you're jumping into the Star Citizen universe for the first time, and don't really know where to start, then you've come to the right place. The aim of this guide is to get you familiar with the basics, so you'll be able to find and board your ship. Fly and navigate your way around the solar system, and earn some cash, with nothing more than a starter ship and the currency you start off with. Alright, let's get to business. Today, our starting location is New Babbage. When you log in, you'll wake up in an apartment in the Aspire Grand Building. Press and hold the Y key to exit beds or seats. Hold F to use the inner thought function. This is how you interact with the environment. If you want to hide or show the global chat, press F12. Pressing the F4 key will toggle between first person and third person camera views. You can free look by holding the Z key. Scrolling your mouse wheel up or down will adjust your walking speed. Hold left shift to sprint. Holding F and scrolling up and down will zoom in and out. Also whilst holding F, right mouse clicking will open the radial wheel menu. With this open, I recommend going to Actions, then Item Actions, and click on Unequip Helmet. This should give you a shortcut on your radial wheel menu to equip and unequip your helmet. This becomes useful when you need to take your helmet off to eat and drink, and also to put it on quickly when you go for a spacewalk and realize you aren't wearing it. The I key will open the Inventory Manager. To equip items, drag them to the correct location on your body or double-click them. For now, all we'll need is a flight suit and a helmet. Sometimes you need to hover over an item in your inventory before you are able to interact with items on your body. On button panels like these, you can focus on them in interaction mode by clicking your middle mouse button or scroll wheel. This allows you to scroll up and down without zooming in and out. Now we'll head to the new Babbage Interstellar Spaceport. If you already know how to get there, you can skip this part using the timestamps below. Now I'll speed this up a little, and I'll see you at the spaceport. Welcome to the new Babbage Interstellar Spaceport. Here you will find the fleet manager terminals, which we can use to have our ship delivered to a hangar. Welcome. Select a ship you wish to retrieve to a hangar. You can also claim a ship on insurance to have it delivered although there will be a wait time which you can reduce for a cost. The time and cost depends on the size and value of the ship, usually quick or cheap for starter ships. You will however lose any cargo or inventory that was on board that ship, but you will keep any upgraded components. This may change in future patches. Your 
If you forget the hangar that was assigned to you, just look for the ship marker. Now for another quick elevator ride, and I'll see you in the hangar. Ships with interiors, and some ships with external inventory access, currently have an inventory system separate from the cargo system. You can access this from inside the ship with your inventory manager, or by locating the external inventory access port on ships like the Scorpius shown here. You can transfer items between your ship inventory and the local inventory of a city, station or outpost. This can be done in a large area around any location with a local inventory. If you have crew members, they will have their own separate inventory on board your ship. To quickly activate the default interaction for an object like your pilot seat, just tap F. Once you're comfy in the pilot seat, you can flight ready all systems by pressing R, or the U key will toggle power to all systems. To toggle power to individual systems, the keys are I for thrusters, O for shields and P for weapons. Let's set a shortcut for requesting takeoff and landing permissions, as it isn't set by default. Press escape, then go to options. Then go to key bindings. Click on advanced controls. Open the flight movement settings. Scroll down until you find the request landing key bind. Double click to set a keybind of your choice. This key will allow you to contact air traffic control for takeoff as well as landing. Before we move, decrease your speed limiter by scrolling down on your mouse wheel. You'll see the little box indicator on the side of your velocity gauge. This will help prevent you from spearing into a hangar wall and dying in a fiery explosion. Now hold space to strafe upwards. If you don't lift off, try increasing your speed limiter. Left control to strafe down. The N key will toggle landing gear. A to strafe left. D to strafe right. W, to accelerate forward. S, to reverse. Q, to roll left. And E, to roll right. Now hit the key we set to contact air traffic control, and get these hangar doors open. You are clear to launch. Don't forget to raise your speed limiter with the mouse scroll wheel. If you have a ship with VTOL, you can toggle the VTOL mode by pressing K. Feel free to pause here if you'd like to take in the scenery around Microtech. All ships handle differently and have different cruising speeds in atmosphere. The Avenger Titan handles a bit like an intoxicated goose in atmosphere, but in space it's a different machine altogether. Alright, let's point the nose straight up, and press C, to activate cruise control. When cruise control is active, you'll see the marker here, near the speed limiter indicator. The cruise control will attempt to keep the ship moving forward at your speed limiter setting. 
Left shift will activate your afterburner, which you'll notice has a limited capacity. Ship speeds and travel modes are changing pretty significantly in upcoming patches. Let's have a brief look at the power triangle. In interaction mode, focus on one of the multi-function displays. These are more commonly known as MFDs. Open the menu on the MFD and find the power settings. You may need to scroll down. The power triangle splits capacitor between weapons, shields and thrusters. Assigning more capacitor to one of these will recharge or reload them much quicker unless you're using ballistic weapons. Energy weapons will also gain ammunition capacity with higher capacitor distribution. Ballistic weapons don't require capacitor for now, so you're free to split capacitor between shields and thrusters if you're rocking some gats. We're just about to exit the new Babbage Armistice Zone. In the top right corner of your screen, you'll see the Armistice and Communication Array icons. When the Armistice icon disappears, it means your personal and ship weapons are enabled. If you see the Communication Array icon, it means the space is monitored and shooting other players is considered a crime. Around orbital stations as well as rest and relax stations, the armistice zone allows the use of ship weapons. If you perform an act of aggression towards someone in one of these areas, the station guns will open up on you. This includes locking onto someone with missiles even if you don't fire any. I was impressed by the amount of guns I got shot with when I learned about this. My crew, however, weren't quite as impressed. Notice how much faster the boost recharges with 100% power to thrusters. The open angle bracket indicator you see in the distance is your vector indicator. This indicator is important if you decide to YOLO and go into decoupled mode which basically means your ship will not stabilize its own inertia. Whilst decoupled, you'll have to counter the momentum of the ship by yourself. You can do this by either providing the correct amount of counter thrust, or slamming into the side of a station or a friend's ship. But I can pretty much guarantee that your friends won't find your surprise cockpit quite as funny. Now let's have a look at navigation. F2 will open your star map. Here is where you can find and set a destination you wish to quantum travel to. Holding the left or right mouse buttons will allow you to rotate and move the map view around. The mouse scroll wheel will zoom in and out, and double-clicking a location will focus closer in on that area. When you've focused on a planet or moon, you will be able to see locations on the surface or in orbit that you can then set as your destination. To reset the camera view, double right click. Focus in on Microtech and find Port Tresla above New Babbage. Then set it as your destination. When setting a destination, you may find that sometimes you can't set the route. Usually this is because your route is blocked and the star map is unable to calculate the necessary waypoints. In this case, you may need to quantum travel somewhere nearby and try again. Once we have our destination locked in, it's time to get our quantum drive spooled up. Tap the B key to spool up the quantum drive. Aim your ship towards the quantum beacon. When the ship is aligned correctly, the quantum drive will begin calibrating. Once your quantum drive is fully calibrated, you can initiate quantum travel by holding B. Before we land, let's make sure our space brake is utilizing the engine boost. It's not uncommon to overcook the approach to the station. Just go into your game settings, scroll down a little and set this option to yes. Now if you space break by pressing X, 
you'll have a bit more braking thrust. Alternatively, if you're feeling a little more confident, the fastest way to slow down is a good old retro burn. Turn directly around while decoupled, aim at the closed angle brackets which is your reverse vector indicator, and boost hard forward. Once you're near the station, start reducing your speed limiter with the mouse wheel, and hit the key we set earlier to request landing permission. If you're a bit of a pansy, you can hold N to use the auto land feature when close enough to the landing pad. Just make sure no one ever catches you doing this, or you'll never hear the end of it. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay. Once landed, you should have access to the vehicle maintenance services in your Moby Glass. Open the Moby Glass with F1 and click on the vehicle maintenance service button. This is where you repair, refill ammunition, or refuel. All right, turn the ship off and we'll head into the station. Weapon systems offline. And one of the most important pieces of advice I can give you. Never leave your ship open. Use the Fleet Manager terminal here to store your ship. It'll keep your ship safe and keep the hangar available for other players. Here we'll get to use the helmet shortcut we set earlier so we can eat and drink. Use interaction mode to quick buy a drink, or a snack, and hold left click to consume it. You'll see the thirst and hunger indicators replenish. You can use interaction mode with items you have in your hands. Just look down at the item while holding F. This next part is optional, but it's very convenient to set your regeneration point to the station. It's much quicker to get back to your ship and mission location if you spawn on a station, rather than in a city. These terminals you'll find in medical clinics allow you to transfer your regeneration imprint. Just click on transfer imprint and click confirm. Now, if you die, this will be your spawn location unless you have a crime stat. On the left just outside the medical clinic are the Habs. This is where you should wake up if you log off here. As we don't need any supplies for the mission we're about to do, we can head straight to the terminals and retrieve our ship. So get your helmet back on, and we'll continue once you're back in your pilot seat. To find the contract we want, open your Moby Glass and click on the Contract Manager. Always accept the call to arms contract in the mercenary category. This will pay out a bonus for each criminal brought to justice. Then we want to go to the service beacons category and find a low threat combat assistance mission that isn't more than a million kilometers away. Double check that you're tracking the combat assistance contract. All channels, I'm under attack and need help. 
Now open the star map and set a destination to the quantum beacon. Once that's done, let's head to the mission. You are here to Currently, using the scanner ping with tab is the best way to see anything that might be hidden in the dark. The downside is sometimes the objects you've scanned can cause ghost markers to stay on your screen. You can turn on your ship lights by pressing L. Make sure your power settings are correct before getting into combat. Also, to make things a little easier, you can group your weapons to all fire with the same mouse button. If you go to the Weapons menu, then the Guns tab, you'll see the guns assigned to either 0 or 1. Group 0 is fired by the left mouse button and Group 1 is fired by the right. If you want to use missiles, arm a few before getting to your destination. Middle mouse button will switch between missile operator mode and gun mode. You can arm up to four missiles at once. Cycle the armed missile count with G. If you have multiple types of missiles on your ship, you can switch them by right clicking. Here, you will see the maximum and minimum lock range of your armed missiles. For incoming missiles, tapping H will launch a decoy, whilst holding it down will start to increase the burst size until you launch them by letting go. Holding left or right alt before you press H will increase or decrease the burst size. Depending on your signatures and the missiles which have a lock on you, you may require several decoys to break the lock. Currently electromagnetic missiles still seem to hold the strongest lock, and are preferred in PvP. For PvE, default missiles are fine. You can also launch a noise field with J. These are intended to disrupt enemy radar in an area around your ship, although they don't seem to have much purpose yet. You heard my calm, that's amazing. I need some help mopping up these bastards. If you happen to get punked by phantom markers on your screen like I totally did on purpose just now, try using the scanner ping to locate nearby signatures in space. Objects you've pinged with your scanner will appear as a cube indicator with noise surrounding it. The red carrot marker signifies a hostile or criminal ship. Pressing the T key will lock the ship directly in front of you. Locking and firing missiles is as simple as keeping your target in the circle on your screen, and firing when the locking animation is completed. While in gun mode, you will see this marker which is your targeting pip. The targeting pip is set to lead your target by default, and this is where you need to aim to hit your target. When it's a square like now, it means you should be within your weapon range. When it's a circle, you're out of maximum gun range. If you have gimbal turrets, you can cycle between auto gimbal, manual gimbal and fixed aim mode with G. Auto gimbal mode is essentially an auto aim if you keep your target within the dotted circle. Fixed aim locks your aim to the crosshair in the middle of your screen. And manual gimbal allows you to aim your guns within the firing cone. Fixed aim still has some aim assist built in which makes fixed weapons far more preferable as you can gain more firepower by trading the gimbal mounts for bigger weapons. You've got more bad guys on my scope. Oh. I thought I was a goner. And the contract is completed. You'll see the bonus payment from the call to arms, which is 500 AUEC for a single pilot at Crimestat 1.
and then the contract reward. Repeating these combat assistance missions will gain you reputation with the civilian defense force, which you can check by opening your Mobi glass and going to the Delphi system. As you gain higher levels of reputation, the difficulty and rewards you are offered will increase. When you want to log off, your best option is to head to a city or a station and land and store your ship. Then exit the game or log off using the escape menu. For ships with beds, you can use the beds to log out while in space. Your friends can also use the beds in your ship to log out, and they can log back in as long as you and your ship are still active. If not, they'll end up in the last station they visited or their home city. The safest way to use the bed logout is start to quantum travel somewhere and hold B to cancel your quantum travel mid-journey. Once you're in the middle of nowhere, hop into the bed and use the interaction mode to find the log off option on your screen. When you log back in, you'll be in the same bed in the same place if no issues have occurred with the Star Citizen persistent database and backend servers. But it is an alpha and not a full release game. Bugs and glitches happen. You and your ship will disappear from space shortly after you log off. Now a few handy websites that'll make life much easier for you during your time in the verse. The Cornerstone website is a handy tool for finding prices and locations of items you wish to rent or purchase, like ship upgrades or armor set items. If you want to explore mining and trading gameplay, the UEX site run by United Express Corporation will help you plan a trade route or find prices on ore, commodities, harvestables or ships. You can even plan your refining jobs to view your profits. Over on the Urkel site, you can test out ship components on your ship and see how they affect your signatures, damage output and survivability before you purchase them in the verse. On the RSI website, there is a guide system that some players find useful, as it can link you up with a player to guide you through certain aspects of the game, like mining, trading or combat. The Issue Council is the place to report bugs that you experience during game testing. You can contribute to existing bug reports to increase its priority, or sometimes find workarounds to bugs that are plaguing your time in the game. And if you're new and haven't made an account yet, there is a referral system that gives you a small amount of extra starting cash and some perks for whomever referred you. If you don't know anyone who can give you a referral code, you can use the GoRefermi website to get a random code, which is selected from a list of codes that have been submitted by other players within the last three months. Make sure to add your own referral code when you have an account. If you're feeling generous and would like to support the channel, I'll leave my referral code in the video description. That concludes part 1 of the beginner tutorial series. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button or leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Fly safe.